Hey, what's up guys? Grant here. Welcome back to the workshop. This video is going to be a little heart to heart video, so we're not going to do anything fancy. It's really just getting a chance to explain some of the things that have been going on. So no background music, no fancy editing, just a heart to heart, mono a mono to give you updates on what's been going on with the channel and what the future looks like for the King of Random. But first of all, let's start off with some of your questions. I jumped into Twitter and I asked you what questions you would have for me if I did an update video. And some of the responses I got back were things like, what have you been working on? And will you and Nate be working on videos together in the future? Uh, Max Cornet asks, are you coming back? Walk It Off said, how did you meet Nate and what was he doing before he started to work with you? And Bob Staggs asked, I'd just like to have a proper introduction to Nate. It's clear that he's the main host of the channel at this point, which is fine. I like Nate, but it would be good to know more about him. So who is Nate? Where did he come from? Those of you who have been watching daily videos will remember about three months ago we started to transition Nate in. I did give some background and some history as to who he is, what he does, and why he's on the channel now. Nate is our newest and finest addition to the team. I brought him on board because he's helped me with a lot of cool projects in the past. He also worked with Devin Graham on his Mario Kart in real life video, where he built red turtle shells and turned them into remote control racers that go up to 60 miles an hour. But I'm guessing you probably missed those videos if those are still questions in your mind. So let's do a quick brief recap. Uh, let's rewind about six months ago. I was hiring for an assistant or a sidekick. I was looking for people who could help with prototyping projects and getting things ready to film. So I ended up getting about 300 responses from amazing people all over the world. People ranging from Boeing engineers to NASA engineers to university scientists to uh, DIY. When Nate submitted his application, the thing that stood out to me was he actually had experience in sculpting, uh, doing work with fiberglass. He'd actually done some projects with Devon Supertramp, um, which was really impressive because that kind of style fits really well with what I like to do on my channel here. So in the end, I, uh, I decided to bring Nate on the team. And the idea was he was going to help prototype these projects, get them ready so that I could film them for you. But uh, then we actually took it to the next level here. Part of a system that I'm going to tell you about in a little bit where we decided to bring Nate actually onto the camera and allow him to present that to you as well. Now Nate uh, was not an actor, he's never made videos, so this is actually his first time on camera. And uh, it's been an interesting experience for everyone. I think the audience, me and Nate as well, to all grow together as he is now fitting into this role of presenting. This is something new, it's an experiment that we haven't tried before, but I'm really excited because it looks like it's coming together. So the question about whether or not I'm coming back, that is an open question. I definitely have the ability to. A lot of people have wondered if I've sold the channel, if Nate's taken over the channel, if it's Nate's channel now. Uh, the answer is no, Nate's part of a team. We've got about, mm, 10 different people now working on the King of Random channel, and Nate is a part of that. He's an essential part, and he helps make all the projects and everything of that nature work. But my goal is to reduce as much of the workload off each of my team members so that we can all work together and make this a sustainable system. So how did Nate and I meet? Well, he sent me an email, he applied, and uh, he got the job. So that's basically how we met. So the answer to the question, is it Nate's channel? Is Nate taking over? Is the channel sold? The answer is no. It's still very much the king of random. It's our channel. We are a team working together now, and Nate is an important part of that team for prototyping the projects. But we also have film crew. We have editors. We have managers. We have attorneys. We have a whole group of people working together. And the reason I put this into place is because I want the king of random to be sustainable. I'm producing daily videos that are 10 to 15 minutes is no easy task. So I take a lot of pride in the fact that we've been able to create that this year. This is a new thing that we've put together this year and it's now working like a well-oiled machine. So Connor Sturgeon asked a question, does Nate feel stressed right now? You guys are uploading a ton of videos. They're all pretty large scale projects. So is he feeling what you were feeling a couple of months ago? And that is a great question. And the answer is Nate is working hard. He's spending a lot of time thinking, prototyping. I have a list of about 800 different projects that he's going through and tinkering and experimenting with and uh, putting new variations on. We invent a lot of the projects on the spot. So a lot of things that we produce are things that we kind of make up based on existing ideas and modifications and spins that we put on it. However, Nate doesn't have to do any of the filming. He doesn't have to do the editing. He doesn't have to write the scripts. He doesn't have to produce the videos, upload them to YouTube, monetize, and manage the social media. So he doesn't have nearly the workload that uh, a typical YouTube creator did, or especially like I did, where I was working 16 hours a day, uh, six to seven days a week. So. Um, the idea is that this system is built for long-term sustainability. We're also looking at bringing on another host. 
um, so that we have two of them. And the idea is to be able to post seven videos a week, maybe even more. But then with two hosts, we'll be able to give each other uh, time off. So if Nate needs a little bit of a break, he'll have time where he can do that. Enoch Rodriguez says, how do you do a video every day? And the answer to that, Enoch, is this has been a work in progress for the last two years, and especially the last year, I've been trying to figure out how to reverse engineer the way that I think, the way that I make videos, and I've put systems into place and brought people on board that actually serve different functions to build an assembly line of video production. So we're taking awesome projects and we're producing high quality videos between 10 and 15 minutes every single day. And we've got this to the point now where it's working like a well-oiled machine. It's internally regulated. Nobody really has a boss watching over their shoulder. A lot of it's remote and people can work from home. So I think we may have created one of the best possible systems for producing videos on YouTube. And uh, it's duplicatable, it's teachable. I can teach you how to do it. Brock Lewis says, why do you need so much help with the videos? Um, just think about this for a second, Brock. If you had to come up with a new idea, play with it, prototype with it, until you got it to a place where it would actually serve a purpose on the internet, where people could benefit from it, uh, and then you had to film it and write a script and edit it and upload it to YouTube and monetize it, uh, when you think about that, you know, any normal production company is using between 20 to 70 different people on their staff to produce a video. And we're producing a video every single day. And back in the day, it was just me doing the job of 20 different people. Right now I have 10 people on my team and that's still not enough to be able to produce a video every day. There is so much that goes into producing videos that I know some of you appreciate, a lot of you just don't know what goes into it, but it is a massive amount of effort. Hundreds of hours of creativity and filming and production and man hours can go into videos and the cost can be quite high on them as well. I think right now on the King of Random channel, I'm spending about $1,500 per video to make a video every day. So every single day, $1,500 just to put the video up there for you to watch for free. And of course I'm taking a little bit of risk for doing that because I have payroll to make whether or not the video gets views. If we don't make $1,500 on a video, I'm losing money on it. But um, by you watching and sharing these videos, you're actually helping support this system where we're able to create jobs, bring people in, and right now we're supporting about 17 different people through these videos that we're making on this channel alone. And that's because of you, so thank you. Wade Brown says, as the king of random, it seems you could get into more areas than the current scope of the show. Any plans to branch out into other areas? That's a great question, Wade. I would be interested to know what areas you'd like us to branch out to. I suppose we could really cover a lot of different areas. For me, I'm, I'm a hands-on, I'm how-to. I like to know how things work, how to tinker and build. So that's mostly what I focus on in this channel. However, we're open to suggestions. If there's something that you'd like to see, certainly we could we could branch out and do some experiments for you. So that's where your comments come in. If we see a majority of comments leaning a certain direction, we will notice that and take action. All right, Rugo wants to know, will we be doing more collaborations with other YouTubers? I expect we will. Um, my focus has been on building systems and just making these videos work every day consistently. Uh, now that that's working out really well, I think it's maybe good timing to start reaching out and looking at collaborations. We don't have anything on the radar right now, but um, we do have a lot of really great friends on YouTube that we've worked with before. And so, uh, so yeah, we probably will reach out, make some connections. Let us know what YouTubers you wanna see us work with and we'll reach out and see if we can make that connection. And uh, last comment here I picked from What's Inside. They said, if Nate and Grant went head to head on American Ninja Warrior, who would win? That's a great question. Who do you guys think would win? I think um, it doesn't really matter who wins, it's how you play the game, right? However, uh, it's funny that Dan, mentioned this because um, we actually know the guys who produce American Ninja Warrior. So it, theoretically it's possible we could set up a match and find out. So next let's dive right in. I wanna talk about some of the concerns about YouTube. There have been so many channels and videos losing monetization on videos. You know, you work really hard for two weeks as a creator, you upload your video and then it gets demonetized. And the problem is even if it's a safe video, if, and if your video takes off and gets a lot of views, by the time it gets corrected and re-monetized, you've kind of lost that whole momentum, you've lost that wave, and it's basically like going to work for a couple weeks and not getting paid. It's very frustrating for a YouTube creator. Now I do understand from YouTube's perspective, they're trying to manage and create a safe environment for brands to be able to advertise, and if we didn't have brand money, we wouldn't actually make any money from AdSense, so 
it's good that YouTube's trying to do that. However, as a personal creator, there's really no guarantee that you're not gonna be affected. Also, I've seen a lot of channels just getting terminated and shut down. I know my channel twice in history has just disappeared. Uh, luckily, it's come back and um, been an interesting experience, but definitely a wake-up call as well. So I'm a DIYer. I'm a problem solver, and my mind has gone to work on how do we solve this problem? How can you make yourself into a quality YouTuber where you can put up videos and not have to worry about getting demonetized or getting your channel shut down? And I have come up with a solution that I'll tell you about in a little bit. But first I wanna tell you a bit about my story, what's happened to me over the last six months. There's been a lot of changes with me personally, uh, my direction, my drive, my ambition, and my passion. So let's jump into that for a second. I'm gonna flip open the notebook and draw some pictures. One thing that's important to know is I didn't get into YouTube because I wanna be famous or make a lot of money. I got into YouTube to express my passions and my hobbies. And once I started doing that, I started taking a load on myself. At first it was really fun to get views on the videos, but when things started to explode, that load got heavier and heavier and heavier, and I was the only one carrying it. People wanted more videos, they wanted more DIY, they wanted higher quality projects, they wanted higher frequency, and I tried to meet that demand as best I could. Not because I had to, it's because I wanted to, and it was a fun challenge for a while, but after a while that challenge got very, very heavy, and I couldn't see a way to keep balancing this on my own. When you're a creator who's doing this yourself, you're basically building everything on top of yourself. It's like this triangle where everything depends on you. You've got your ideas, you're writing your scripts, and you're filming, and your audio, and, and you're doing your editing, and you're uploading, and your monetization, and you're managing the comments, the social media, you're doing the marketing, you're managing your business, you're managing your family. And for one person to carry this load, it gets very, very, very heavy. It's very painful as well. It's too much for one person to carry. And one of the paradoxes about being a YouTube creator is you want your videos to be successful, but the more successful your channel gets, the more people depend on you to keep making them. And this load gets heavier and heavier and heavier until in a lot of cases, the YouTuber breaks. So we talk about creator burnout. Think about massive channels that you knew five years ago that you just don't even hear from now because it just became too much. They stopped posting videos or they changed their content style completely or you know they just uh, disappeared altogether. So this year was my year to put systems into place. I taught myself how to build systems, how to duplicate and reverse engineer who I am, how I think, what I do, and turn that into systems and processes where I could hire people in to help me take over those positions and make it run like a well-oiled machine. And the results are in. This last month and a half, we put out a video every single day, seven days a week, and I have been able to spend time with my family. I've been able to work on more systems, and it is running smoothly. Everybody is happy. Nobody's burning out because we're all carrying the load together. It's all about building systems, duplicating your efforts, and I think I've cracked the code now to a place where I can teach you how to do it as well. So essentially, I've gone from this, where I was carrying everything by myself, which was really burdensome and really affected my quality of life, to building a system here now that is completely stable and gives me all kinds of joy and freedom to do other things, things that I may consider a little bit more important right now. For example, some of you know that I have four kids, four boys, they're aged eight, six, four, and we have a new baby that's right around eight months right now. This right now is the prime time of their life where they need their dad. I need to be there for them. And I don't wanna miss out on those golden years because once my kids grow up, that's the end. So I felt a lot of pressure between making videos and spending time with my family. I felt really pulled to spend time with my family. But I'm not sure how to do that without sacrificing YouTube. So building systems that can work without me has actually served a purpose where we can produce daily videos for you. There's still king of random content, there's still ideas pulled off my list, and they're still done and presented in a way that's the king of random style, but has basically duplicated my efforts to the point where now I can go and do things like spend time with my family, raise my kids, and also put together concept systems and seminars that I can teach to you so that you can do the same thing with your business, your product, your production, or whatever your ideas may be. Let me tell you, anybody who wants to be a YouTuber does not want to be trapped by success. You know, there's nothing worse than being so successful you feel like you have your life being ripped away. This is a lot of weight to carry, and we've cracked the code. we figured out how to do it, how to get that weight off of our shoulders. And what's happening with The King of Random right now is it's becoming a brand. I'm essentially stepping to the side because I've been the bottleneck holding it back. There's only so much that I can do. But by removing myself from the scenario, it's now able to expand and scale and grow bigger. And so it's able to grow and meet your needs in a lot more effective way. And not to mention that, it's given me the freedom to improve my marriage, to spend better time with my kids, and to work on my body as well, and my mind, which are things that suffer when you're working so hard every day. There's not a lot of time for yourself or your family. 
but those are the most important things in your life. The King of Random Movement has never really been about me. It's been about expressing passion, hobby, creativity, and we now have a system to still deliver that to you and hopefully inspire you to try projects of your own. And producing videos every single day is now working like a well-oiled machine. So the quick 30 second summary of everything that's happened on the King of Random channel right now to this point has been, I got to the point where the, the workload was too heavy for me to carry. And with four boys growing up who needed their dad, I felt really pulled against continuing to make YouTube videos. So it was either let YouTube go and, and stop doing videos completely and be a good dad, or find a way to make it work. And so that's what I've done. I've worked really hard this year on building systems, on reverse engineering how I think, how I do things, and turn them into systems and processes where I could hire great quality people who could do the job just as well, if not better than I can. And we're seeing that now. The King of Random is stable, and it's to a point now where it works completely independently of anything that I do. If I were to disappear for the next two years, the King of Random would still be producing videos for you. That's how well automated it is. And the coolest thing about this, I figured it out for myself from scratch. I've DIY'd this whole thing. I'm a DIYer, I'm a tinkerer, I'm a creative problem solver, and I actually get a lot of joy by being able to share that. So one of the things that I'm working on right now, one of my biggest projects right now has been working up to putting on a seminar or an event training where I can teach you how I've done what I've done and how you can do it too. So what I'm working on right now is something that excites me and scares me at the same time. It's something I've never done before, but I feel like I'm in a great position to do it because I've been through the trenches, I've learned how to make systems work, I've felt the pressures of burnout and all these problems, you know, dealing with demonetization, channel termination, and I've organized a system now that I feel really confident about and I'm ready to teach it to you. So the idea is, uh, we're going to run an event in April, a three-day event or a seminar where you can come and learn how we do everything that we do and how to do it for yourself. How does YouTube work? How do sponsorships work? How does video production work? I'm going to teach it all. Uh, seven years in YouTube, being one of the top creators and seeing a lot of the things from high level, uh, I think there's a lot of secrets, a lot of back-end information that you need to know about because you can be creators. The world needs you. You have a message to share and it can be intimidating if you don't know the right steps to take and if you don't really have the big picture. So what I'm planning to do right now is putting on a three-day event training. I'm gonna take you through everything that I know as a YouTube creator, put everything on the table, basically show you all of my methods, all my tools, the way that we think, my checklists, uh, you know, how to talk to YouTube, how sponsorships work, give you everything. You know, everything as I see it, I wanna to give to you because I know YouTube and the internet in general can be very intimidating if you don't have some kind of a path or a course to follow. So we're gonna try this out. In April, I'm gonna try a three-day event, a seminar, where I'm gonna allow you to come out and spend three days with me learning about all the processes, all the systems, meeting team members, and essentially setting you up for success. This right here is the basic course outline as I envision it right now, so let me walk you through it. I'm gonna talk about how I got started on YouTube, why I started on YouTube, and when it got really hard, and what kind of things kept me going through the hard times. I'll also talk about when I broke out as a YouTube creator and what some of the factors were that helped that happen, and how the tide changed and the pendulum swung in my favor, uh, the persistence and what kept me motivated and kept me going. And also I'm gonna talk about how I felt trapped by success and went through three different phases of creator burnout where I almost gave up on YouTube and making videos completely. I'm gonna help you identify your passion, help you find out what value you have for the world. As a creator, you have a voice, you have a message, you just may not know what it is. Some of you may know what it is and just have trouble expressing it or defining it. So I'm gonna walk you through that process of how to really identify what gets you buzzing, what gets you excited in the morning to get out of bed. Uh, the ideal always is to be able to make money doing something that you love. And so we're gonna help you identify what your passions are. And then we're gonna help you identify what audience, what type of people out there actually need what you have. What types of people are naturally attracted to you? What types of people can you solve problems for? And finally, how can we turn that into some kind of a product where what you have is so valuable to people that they need you to give it to them? What I want you to realize is you've got something so special, so unique, and you can do better than anyone else in this world that it would almost be selfish if you kept it to yourself. There's a lot of value in that and we're gonna help you systematize it and turn it into a product that can actually generate you money. And when you think about YouTube, most people are trying to make the AdSense revenue, which is not very good. You get a thousand views on a video, you might make about one dollar. It's not a really good return on your investment. But if you have some kind of a product that you can sell and you're meeting someone's needs and you're using YouTube as a platform to sell your product, you know, Say you uh, sell a shirt or a hat and you make five or $10 on that. Well, in YouTube terms, you would have to get 5,000 to 10,000 views to make that same amount of money on AdSense. I'm gonna show you how to start your own YouTube channel. If you don't have one already, we're gonna do step-by-step -step training on setting up your YouTube channel, uh, coming up with a name, 
your icon, your banner, adding website info, social media links, and also playlists as well. Basically all the things that you need to know as a bigger creator, and you'll be doing that right from the very beginning. Also, we're gonna help you make your first video. We'll do a breakout session where we either use phones or other camera equipment to record your very first video. We'll help you upload it to your channel. And so by this point, being at, at this event, you will have your own YouTube channel, you'll have your first video. And if you've already got a YouTube channel with videos, it'll be a good opportunity to talk about all the little details of things that you could add or enhance or maybe things that you haven't thought about that will just make your channel so much better. Next, I'm gonna help you make a plan for success. This is where I'm gonna teach you how to concentrate your efforts. You figure out what types of videos you like to make, how will you best express those passions, and how are you gonna be adding value to the internet? That's really important. We're gonna help you identify what the purpose of your videos are, uh, how to attract your audience, build a community, and show people where they can buy your products. We wanna set you up so the AdSense isn't even a factor. When you become a YouTuber, you don't have to rely on Google placing ads on your videos. You're gonna be selling your own products, you're gonna be creating your own quality of life, and using YouTube as a tool to do it in some of the most effective ways that we know how. I'm gonna teach you about video production. This could be intimidating for a lot of people who haven't done it before. We're gonna show you our processes. What do we actually do? What camera equipment do we use? What settings do we use? Lighting, camera equipment, how to work audio, how to work editing software. We will even have some of my editors and my film crew at the seminar, at the event, showing you what we use and maybe even doing a live demonstration. We're going to take those videos, we're gonna do some real-time editing, show you the editing software that we use and walk you through step-by-step -step how to film a video, how to edit it, and how to get it ready for YouTube. We're gonna talk about making thumbnails for your videos. We're gonna talk about making titles and how to structure your videos so they're most engaging, how to create storyline arcs and calls to action. We're also gonna talk about watch time considerations. How long do your videos need to be to access different types of monetization options? There are places you can go to get professional elements to add to your videos to make you look top notch. Motion graphics, logo stings, bumpers, motion backgrounds, After Effects templates, motion text. A lot of times these things exist as templates where you can just download them, add them to your video and throw in your icon and it makes you look very professional and it doesn't cost that much money we're going to show you where to get them also royalty free music how to use background music that's not going to be subject to copyright claims i'm going to show you where to go to get those and how to do it correctly i'm also going to introduce you to all the production tools that we use all the things that we use online to automate our system and make it flow as smoothly as it does the end screen elements the cards the description the playlist and how to link to associated websites. Essentially, you are gonna have access to all the tools that I have. Everything that we do on the King of Random channel, you're gonna see how it works intimately and you will have access to the exact same tools that we use to do what we're doing. How do you build a production pipeline? How do you set it up so that as you've got videos coming out, you've got new videos being produced at the same time in a way that's sustainable and it doesn't run out? You know, you're consistently feeding the system so that three and five years from now, you are still producing great quality content without burning out. How do you hire help when you're at the point where you're generating enough revenue or in your position where you're ready to have some help? Who do you find? How do you advertise? How do you pre-screen people? How do you train them? How do you pay them? And how do you manage it for success? And a step up from that, how do you automate your production so that it virtually works without you? So that you're putting in the minimal amount of time that you need to to get the system to work the best that it can. Your best resource is your mind, your creativity. You're the thinker, you're the creative genius, and so if you're stuck in the daily processes, then your creativity is gonna be stifled. The best thing that you can do is create systems to automate the stuff that other people can do so you can be free to do what you do best. How to deal with haters. You're gonna produce content that you're very proud of and you've put everything into and you're gonna get people that just don't appreciate it all and are actually gonna be openly mean about it. How do you deal with that? What are some best practices? We're gonna go through that. I'm gonna share all of my insights and the things I would consider pro tips, how to best understand the algorithm as much as possible, how to expand your channel's reach, how to market yourself, how to leverage websites and companies for exposure, and how to growth hack your channel through strategic collaborations and social engineering. And what about sponsorships? How do you actually get sponsored? How do they work? What is the typical pricing? What can you expect to make when you do a sponsored video? What are some example contracts, some example paychecks? I can show you all those things. We do a lot of sponsored content on this channel and we've got a lot of history. We work with some of the biggest brands out there. So we'll have a really good perspective that we can share with you on how sponsors work and what kind of things they're looking for, as well as how to meet the brand's expectations and really crush it so the brands wanna come back and do more of them with you. We're gonna talk about managers, attorneys, and agencies. Who are they, what do they do, and should you have one? We'll go over how to brand yourself. So if you don't wanna do sponsored videos, you wanna sponsor yourself, we're gonna help you identify how to turn your message and your passion into an actual brand. 
how to sell your own products, your own t-shirts, your merch, physical products, digital downloads, and building support groups and training events and things of that nature. We're gonna show you how to set up a website and a landing page so that the people who really need what you've got can find you and go and get it from the right place. And we're gonna do some general discussion about business must-haves and how to set up your entities, LLCs, S-Corps, and what kind of people you should have on your team and things you should be thinking of as a small business owner. And we'll talk a little bit about other social media like Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. What do each of these platforms do? What's the purpose of each? And how can you utilize them to build your brand? And after all that, I know it's gonna be like drinking out of a fire hose, so much information. So we're gonna finish off with a quick start guide, the top one, two, or three things that you need to walk out of the seminar with, the most important things that you could do and take action on. So a little quick reference guide there. And bonus activities, we'll probably have some liquid nitrogen, maybe we'll do some fire events, or uh, bring some blow guns and have a marshmallow war, and just make it fun, things of that nature. So that's it in a nutshell, guys. To answer the question what I've been working on, this is what I've been working on. I'm trying to take all the systems, everything that I've learned in my last seven years of doing YouTube and going through the ringer. It's been a roller coaster of emotions, and I've hit a lot of hard stops, but we figured out how to solve those problems, how to duplicate our efforts, and I'm ready to teach you. So we're gonna try this out. In April, I'm gonna have an event. We're gonna limit it to about 500 people. And if all goes well, we may continue. But uh, if you want more information, I'll put a link down in the description or at the end of the video, there'll be a place that you can click uh, where you can learn more. Uh, we're looking at calling it the self-made seminar because I believe that, that represents everything we do. We're self-made. You could be self-made too. Just take all the tools, all the experience, all the learning, the 20,000 hours that I've invested into this system uh, and come, come spend three days with us where we can share it with you and hopefully set you up for success as well. So I hope that puts everything in perspective, guys. I'm a father. I'm a husband. Uh, I have my own passions and ambitions for life, and I also care about you. And I'm trying to find ways to make the best of everything work, to keep the channel running, to increase production. My goal is to get seven videos a week so that we're putting out a video every single day, which is very ambitious, but also in a way where it's not crushing me and burning me out. I feel better than I ever have, and I feel very optimistic about the future. So I love you guys. Thanks for supporting the King of Random channel. And remember, by watching and sharing these videos, you are supporting a team of 10 people and their families. We're supporting 17 people, and I think that's really, really amazing. And I'm really excited to see where we grow from here. So remember to check if you've subscribed and ring the bell. Maybe just double check those settings if you're not getting notifications. I'm not sure why YouTube doesn't notify you. Um, that's frustrating, but you know what? That's the way it is and we're dealing with it. So other than that, of course, I'm gonna see you in future videos at random times. It's not my main priority to be in the videos now. I'm working behind the scenes, building all these systems, managing teams of people, and keeping this content coming to you in a way that doesn't rip me away from my family. And I hope you can appreciate that. When it really comes down to it, my family is the most important thing to me. And I do consider you an extension of my family as well. So I'm trying to find the best of both worlds where uh, everybody can be benefited. Anyway, that's it in a nutshell. I hope I've been able to answer most of your questions. I am still here. It's still the King of Random channel, and I'm still very much involved in it. It's the way that I think. It's my systems. It's my processes. And we just have some really, really good people now working on these videos. So keep supporting them. Keep validating Nate. I know he's putting a lot of passion, energy, and attention into the prototyping and the projects that he's making. So the nicer you are to him, the more encouragement you can give him, I know the more validated he's going to feel and the more excited he will be to come to work. It's all a team effort, guys. We appreciate you being on the team, and I'll see you later. Bye.